Jujutsu Kaisen Season 1 was absolutely, diabolically, and utterly solid. The fights were gorgeous, the writing was good, and I actually found the characters really compelling and overall pretty funny. However, there was something missing from the show that didn't really leave a big impact on me as a person. It was in fact so forgettable that before I started watching season 2, I had to look at several recaps just to remember what the fuck season 1 was about. So if you're a silly goofball like me, let me give you a very quick season 1 recap. Yuji, your friends are gonna die! Oh shit, I guess I'll eat this finger. Great, now you have a Hainan Era Sorcerer inside of you. I have a what inside of me? <laughs> I'm Sukuna, the strongest! Hi! <laughs> oh, what the hell? Hi! We're going to kill you. What? Unless you collect all 20 Sukuna fingers, then we kill you later, hee <laughs> hee. Okay, bet. Oh, by the way, if you and Sukuna fought, would you lose? Nah. I would win. This is your team, Sasuke and Sakura. Hey, wait a minute. Alright, go fight this overpowered curse without my help. Sukuna, help me! Nah. Come on, pretty please! Oh, fine. Gombare, Gombare, man. Keep trying. Good job. Ding. Ding. Hey, Megumi. I just took over Yuji's body. And for some reason, I'm really horny for you. I have also taken out Yuji's heart, so if he comes back, he dies. Yuji, come back, please. Oh, you bitch. Damn. Yuji is dead now. Psych, I'm not dead. Let's do the school battle arc now. Not so fast. We villains must first introduce ourselves. I am Ghetto. Wink, wink, smirk, smirk. This is Squidward. This is Mojito. Bruno Mars. Cause you make me feel like... And Volcano Boy. I am going to kill you, Gojo Satoru. Oh, stop. No, you silly goofball! Reversal. Oh, yes. Yeah. Hey, you don't mind if I bring my student? <laughs> Domain expansion. Hey, I'm Yunpei, and I'm going to be a relevant character. <laughs> Rage mode on! <laughs> you can't hurt my soul! How the fuck? How'd you do that? Plot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's oh, okay. No yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah. I understand. No problem. Nonetheless, you still can't beat me all by yourself. <laughs> Hey, I'm Nanami, the sexy dilf that every girl on Pinterest simps over. Where were we? <laughs> Damn, Yunpei's dead. Are you sad? Nah, I'm instantly over it. We can start the battle arc now! Kill Yuji, please. Why? Blood. Oh yeah, yeah that's enough. Enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. Truly one of the moments of all time. I am Toto, and I base my opinions of people depending on what type of women they like. Yuji, what type of woman do you like? Fanboys. Oh my god, Yuji. You are base! Hell yeah, fanboys are the best. If you disagree, unsubscribe. We're, We're gonna, gonna kill you now! No, no you're not! not. Alright, this tournament is going pretty well. I hope absolutely nothing goes wrong. It's a beautiful night! <laughs> I should've bought you flowers. No, you really shouldn't have. <laughs> hey. Are you a fanboy? No, 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 no. Damn. Mods, crush is cool. I ain't playing no games. Every word that I say is coming straight from my heart. So if you're trying to lay in these arms, you guys, hey! Oh, oh come on. <laughs> Alright, that was a great way to end off the season. There's three episodes left. Oh. Okay, I'm going to be a relevant character. Uh, no, my brother! Well, at least I get to run away and become a relevant character. Uh, my brothers are dead now. I don't give a shit. Alright, that's the anime recapped. Now we can finally move on to season 2. And continue the main story. Oh, wait, there is also the movie. <sighs> Damn, I hate my bullies. And they're dead now. Hi! There is a special great spirit inside of you. There is a what? Oh. Join Jujutsu High or we kill you. Fine. Side characters, introduce yourselves. I'm Maki. I love interest. It does absolutely nothing to progress the plot. Yet. I'm Panda and this is Inumaki. He uses a cursed speech technique, which means he can only communicate using slurs. 
Did you seriously think I was gonna make that joke? What? Minority should be supported, not suppressed. Slurs should never be used, not even in humorous context. Okay, I get it. Let's go on this mission now. Oh shit, a special grade! <sighs> Congrats on beating my curse. I'm now going to launch this random attack on a city using all my curse spirits for no particular reason whatsoever. So please leave Yuta Jutsu Kai completely unprotected. Okay! Gojo, I'll be your opponent. Who led the monkey? Out of the cage! Yeah, I actually can't see curse spirits. I have no curse energy. Well, you're still very attractive. Stop it, you baka! Maki, come back! What the fuck happened? I was behind you for like 10 seconds! Hey, hey, Yuta, I fucked up your friends! Let's fight now! Haha, <laughs> <laughs> if power of friendship can't beat me, then nothing can! How about power of love? <laughs> Shit, man, I'm gonna die. Gojo, after you kill me, leave me here unprotected so an evil curse can take over my body and cause huge problems for you in the future. Okay! Damn, Rika, we make a good team! Suicidate, idiota. No, Rika, don't leave me! Damn, you got dumped by that person. Now you can't use Rika anymore. Right? Yuta? Alright, now that I recapped everything, we can finally move on to season 2 and progress the main plot. Oh, never mind. This is another prequel. Damn, I really miss my boy Yuji, man. The season begins with Mei Mei and Utahime exploring Bruce Wayne's mansion. We get presented with the worst piece of animation since Seven Deadly Sins Season 3. They realize the cursed spirit of Batman had trapped them. So they try to escape only to have the entire mansion obliterated by the main characters of this arc. Gojo and Ghetto. <laughs> Gojo and Geth are our besties now! Later that day, the principal instructs them to protect this girl, which will later be turned into the Star Plasma Vessel. What is the Star Plasma Vessel? Watch the fucking anime. Then some villain characters appear, but you can tell how relevant they're gonna be based on their designs. A battle ensues! I love watching Geto fight so much, because you never know what random bullshit attack go he's gonna pull out of his ass. For one time, he could throw some cursed squidwards to break the window, then he could summon a whole ass dragon! It's so random and I love it. They try to get Ammonai out of the scene as quickly as possible, they get interrupted by this paper bag motherfucker, and then Gojo explains his power again even though literally everybody knew exactly how they worked and then he uses reversal red nope it failed gojo didn't know how to use reverse curse technique at the time haha <laughs> good to know i bet this will not be an important plot point anyway we figure out the reason so many people are after amanai is that the goat himself toji fushiguro put a bounty on her for two days whoever kills amanai We'll get a lap dance from a local fanboy. So we bet all the villains will be on their asses, including me. Amana is now spending her last days with the people she loves. However, once Gojo and Geta find out about the bounty, they decide to fly Amana to a location that I already forgot in order to protect her from all the villains till the bounty is over. So we got a wholesome beach episode! Yippee! They outlast the bounty, went back to Jujutsu High, and it was finally time for Amana to become the Star Plasma Vessel. How did I not sense your curse energy? Well, it's quite simple. I'm using Atlas VPN, the sponsor of this video. <laughs> I thought this was gonna be a sponsor segment. But it is! Atlas VPN is a tool that encrypts and hides your virtual location. It changes your IP and DNS address, making it impossible for attackers to track your location. With Atlas VPN, you can search the web free of malware attacks and personalize ads, since Atlas VPN keeps your private information safe from intruders! What if I don't care about my online privacy? Atlas VPN offers so many other features. For example, while you were out here protecting Amanai, I was watching Netflix, but my favorite show, Power Patrol, isn't available in Japan. Thankfully, Atlas VPN can magically change my location to somewhere where the show is available. But if that's not enough, let me remind you that it even saves you money. Since websites have built-in prices depending on your location, you can use Atlas VPN to get the best deals, including subscriptions, airlines, hotels, and many more. Damn, those are a lot of great features, but it's probably too expensive!
you are very wrong. You can now get the Atlas VPN Black Friday price cut for just $1.70 per month plus six months extra with a 30 day money back guarantee. So you've got nothing to lose. Protect your privacy and get many benefits of Atlas VPN for a ridiculously low price by clicking the link in the pinned comment. Be quick though, this is a limited time offer, so make sure to get it before it expires. Nah, I'm still gonna pass. Too bad. <gasps> he broke the infinity! What? If you don't want to end up like Gojo, get the Black Friday Atlas VPN price cut for just $1.70 per month by clicking the link in the description. Thank you Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. Alright, you're ready to become the Star Plasma Vessel. Yes, I am! You don't want to become the Star Plasma Vessel, do you? No, I don't! That's okay. You can run away with us. We'll protect you. After all, we are the strongest. Womp womp. Damn. She really should have used Atlas VPN. SHUT UP YOU SELLOUT! Why are you keeping me alive? Plot. Oh yeah, oh, yeah that makes sense. Sure, Bro, yeah. this show has so many plot holes. Hey, <laughs> your boy is getting paid tonight. I can finally get the Paw Patrol movie tickets. What the fuck? I did it. I downloaded Atlas VPN. Sell out. <sighs> Hello, purple. <laughs> Any last words? No torso Fushiguro. Get Atlas VPN Black Friday deal. Also, please take care of my son. Sure. Hey Megumi, I kinda killed your dad, so I'll adopt you now. Yeah, sure. Oh, just like that? Yeah, I didn't really know him, so I don't care. Oh, okay. Do -do -do. Hi Gojo! Ghetto is evil now. The fuck? Ghetto, why are you evil now? Plot. Oh yeah, oh, understand. Oh, no that problem, sense. yeah, no that problem. makes sense. Bye bye! Hey, where are you going? To the present time. Oh shit, you're right. Sensei, Nobara won't tell us where babies come from. I already told you, you have to do the sex. What even is the sex? I'm a visual learner, by the way. It's storks. Storks bring them. Shut, Shut up, Sasuke. Sasuke. Oh, come on, dude. And that was it! Oh my god! That was the fucking prequel! Now we can finally, after two goddamn years, move on to the main storyline. But before we do that, let's have a talk about the premature death arc. It was interesting to see the dynamic that Gojo and Ghetto had and the reason they went separate ways, even though I do believe Ghetto's conversion to the dark side wasn't all that convincing. Don't get me wrong, I think the motivations were well thought out, but the writers could spend more time not just telling us, but showing us the true struggles of Ghetto. Instead of saying that cursed spirit just stays awful, show it. Show Ghetto gagging, puking every time he swallows one. Show him crying in bed, resenting non-sorcerers. Show us how he's first hesitant with killing civilians and then gradually level him up instead of just going from 0 to 100 in a matter of minutes. I believe that that would have been more convincing than the complete 180 that he made in the span of 13 minutes. That would have truly made Ghetto the shining star of this arc. However, the one that truly shined in this arc was the man himself, Toji Fushiguro! I am a simp for this man, not because he has big, girty muscles, but because of the GOAT ENERGY he emits! The fact that Gojo got bodied by somebody who has no cursed energy at all truly shows a new level of disrespect. And he did not do this in a plot armor type way. He first drained him by keeping him awake for 3 days straight, used his no cursed energy to make himself impossible to track and detect. When Gojo eliminated his surroundings, he used fly heads and delivered a final blow using the inverted spear of heaven to break infinity. And the only reason why Gojo is still alive today is because Toji didn't bother to check on the body. Both Gojo and Ghetto wouldn't be the menaces they are today if Toji didn't humble the shit out of them. And with that out of the way, let's finally begin the real season 2. Shibuya Incident Arc. The season begins with a slice of life episode that's so wholesome, yippee! <laughs> me, 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 me. I do not care. Jujutsu Kaisen apparently got a traitor, but who could it be? It's Mechamaru. 
they revealed it instantly. Apparently, Geto and Mojito made a binding vow with him. Mekamaru reveals some information and Mojito fixes his body. And now, it's his turn to complete the binding vow before they fight. Oh shit, he's hot. I love Jujutsu Kaisen, man. It's the only show that can make a giant mech versus a shape-shifting maniac make sense and actually look hype as shit! I hope the animation budget used in this episode will not be to the detriment of the entire season. Mechamaru actually had a decent plan on how to win this fight. It was by calling Gojo. But Geto put a veil over the entire thing. So Mechamaru began plan B. SUICIDE! He started wasting his remaining lifespan, blasting lasers at Mahito's ass. Silly Mechamaru, lasers don't hurt his soul! But these random spikes do. Why do they hurt his soul? I don't know. It's probably explained in the manga. Mechamaru's now got the upper hand, and he actually might win this! <gasps> no! No! Mechamaru died. Just kidding, he used the simple shadow style to fight and killed Mahito! Almost. They still got him. Rest in peace, Mechamaru. Also, get to mention something about a Shibuya attack that will be happening on Halloween. And I would have probably glanced over that if this arc wasn't called the Shibuya incident. And as you might have guessed, an incident happens in Shibuya. Wow, amazing. Fantastic. That was, that was one oh of the God. foreshadowings of all time. Good I job, am man. going to kill my- Gojo arrives on the scene, steps on some people, I wish daddy stepped on me like that, finds the special grades, and then Geto reveals his master plan. They want to surround Gojo with as many people as possible, make it impossible for him to use Reversal Red, Blue, and Infinite Void without hurting anybody directly. So Jogo and Hanami go <laughs> pretty wild, and then Gojo gives us this goofy all light skin stare that was supposed to be creepy? I don't know, I think he looked kinda weird in my opinion. But that's not what I'm here for, I don't care about no Gojo fight. I want to see Yuji versus Bugman! This fight was nothing short of a symphony of raw power and indomitable spirit. Yuji's unyielding resolve and the bug's uncanny tendency with a thrilling tapestry of combat, crafting a mesmerizing spectacle that left me enthralled, exemplifying the very core of, of Jujutsu Kaisen's exquisite battle narrative. This encounter stands as a testament to the series, exceptional storytelling and exquisite animation that breathes life into each battle. Truly, a masterpiece in every sense of the word. Let's go back to the mid Gojo fight now. What do you think of our unbeatable plan, Gojo Satoru? <laughs> I got your arm! Hasta la vista, baby! Oh shit! Oh my god, these are so cute! Can I take this? No, 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 no! <laughs> Come manipulation. What the frick, dude? Let's get him, Hanami! Yeah, 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 yeah! Hanami? Oh my god, Hanami, hi! <laughs> yes! Whoa! Damn. He should have used Atlas VPN. Shut up! Oh shit, I'm panicking! Random bullshit, go! 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 Jogo, there's nothing you can do. Uh, this train is kinda going to Shibuya. Uh, it has a couple of passengers. I killed all the transfigured humans. Hi, Gojo. Hi, Ghetto. You're alive? Yes. Prism Realm, open. I'm going to seal you away. Where are you going to seal me to? Ready Dimension. No! Damn. That episode was lit. They actually did it. They beat the Yo, I'm a Gojo Satoru. Bro, this guy has like 
a 1 for 2 win rate, he can't stop taking L's! First he got bodied by Foji to Shigeru, then the 3 Musketeers? I think it's time he actually starts taking this shit seriously, man. Bro, listen. If I had the Gojo's powers and the three special grades showed up in front of me with the same plan, I would intentionally use blue and kill all of the civilians first. Imagine the look on their faces when their literal only upper hand gets demolished. Then I'll use infinite void and probably ain't all their buttholes, I don't know, I'll, I'll kill them. Also, Gojo killed 1000 transfigured humans in 299 seconds in his 0.2 second domain. Damn, that's a lot of numbers. Why did he not also take off the special grades too? There was like three of them, it could not have been that difficult to at least take off their legs and arms. When the domain was eventually lifted, they would at least be immobilized and ready for Gojo to take them out. Maybe he was just too focused on lifting the domain as soon as possible so the people didn't sustain too much psychological damage. I don't care, it was a dope episode. Geto legit constructed a borderline foolproof plan on how to beat Gojo and it bloody worked. However, I had only one problem with this episode. Ghetto not being ghetto. I don't really get what the point of us going through the entire ghetto turning evil transformation just to kill him off and bring him back with the same motivations as before while making him less human in the process. This makes it harder for me to care for the character since it's not a human with motivation and desires anymore. It's just another evil cursed spirit that does evil things for the sake of being evil. I genuinely see no reason for why Akutami didn't just leave Ghetto alive. Except for the fact that maybe it was to showcase Yuta's power. But that could have been done in many other ways. Look, let me know your opinion on this in the comments. I personally don't think that Ghetto should have been killed. Now that Gojo is sealed, the Jujutsu gang actually has to do some work, Oh, Yuji was the first one to get the info and immediately found the nearest rooftop and told the entire city about it. Nanami, Sasuke and a side character that's probably going to die find them. They try to break the veil to no avail. <laughs> get it? <laughs> Megami gives us some avail exposition that I'm too lazy to explain. TLDR, they have to get on top of this building. However, it has hundreds of transfigured humans on every floor, so they have to get through every single one. Never mind, they are already here. They meet Mario on steroids, and that grandma from Spirit did away with her grandson, so they split into two teams. The side character that's probably going to die uses his elemental powers, which are straight. ASS! It's literally not doing anything, bro! What do you mean? What? I got this back! Toji kills the side character that was probably going to die. We get another Gojo flashback. Yuji pussy farts into Mario's face, killing him in the process. Why did this work against him? Watch the fucking anime. The veil is now broken, meaning the sorceress can finally enter Shibuya. Truly kicking off the real Shibuya incident. Do 